I would like to invite Mercedes and Kendra Arseniega to come up and join me to talk about Arseniega Street Productions for a few minutes. If you don't know about this yet, you are going to. I'm very excited. Please give them a big welcome. Oh, yes, now we get to the chill part. Check, check. You're not following yeah. Mr. White Keys, you're encoring <laughs> Mr. White Keys. That's not good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You guys put on you guys put on some pretty dramatic, cinematic, <laughs> exciting stuff too. Tell me about your programming. Thank you so much. So we've been in operation for about two years. So we're we're kind of a baby boutique production company. Um, and we don't like to put ourselves in a box. Um, it's literally just me and Mercedes. That's it. And a team of very talented people um, who we've gotten to know over the years. Um, I come from a TV and film industry background. She comes from a music background. And we have a lot of crazy ideas, <laughs> irrational <laughs> ideas of like, wouldn't this be cool if we did this? And don't like to be limited by a lack of resources. Um, and so we actually got our start producing drag shows. That is what we are known for. Um, but we've also branched out to music um, production just because we both come from families of musicians. We're both performers and artists ourselves. Um, and so we produce a lot of drag shows and a lot of um, co like concert series around town that feature uh, the vast array of local talent that we have and just like creating more opportunities um, for local artists and specifically marginalized artists. So our wheelhouse and our focus is prioritizing LGBTQ and BIPOC artists in town, whether that's drag performers, uh, burlesque artists, uh, and also musicians. So I'll let you cover anything I missed. Yeah, I think that's our, our big focus is is making sure that those opportunities and genres are represented um, and also uh, the types of audience members that we bring in. Um, and that also has a lot to do with the space activation that you use. Um, I think we can all probably agree to some extent that um, what brings in people for events, part of that's venue, part of that is you as the, the artist, part of that is the producer slash and or promoter if they're two different things. And so everybody brings an element there to it. And so I think that's something that we also try to be mindful of when we're doing our events as well. Uh, what are some of the venues where you've done activations as you call them? Um, yeah, another like not secret is like the venue shortage that we have and like a lot of people are wringing their hands of like there's nowhere for us to perform no tea no shade like everyone's like well we have like uh you know we have like Willowa we have 49th state we have all these things but you know when you're limited to so many options even if those options are really wonderful um it starts to feel a little claustrophobic and so we have sort of specialized in space activation and that is a big reason why we've been successful for just being a baby company because we focus on small and medium-sized events um, because we basically create our own venues out of partnerships. So what I mean by space activation is we, through building meaningful relationships with local business owners, we figure out ways to activate spaces that are already existing, therefore creating new venues. So. We have two shows, Drag Loteria, which is like a Mexican bingo and drag show. It's all ages. It's amazing. It's very fun. Uh, that happens monthly at Cafecito Bonito in East Anchorage. Shout out to Cafecito. Yeah. We love them. Yeah. <laughs> and we also do uh, alt R&B Neo Soul Plus concert series at Cafecito Bonito called Lights Down Low. And that features a new local artist, a different local artist every month. That is also at Cafecito and... If you've been, anybody been to Cafecito Bonito? Some of the best coffee in town. And that is, um, we're, we're a Latina-owned, woman-owned, queer-owned business. That is also a Latina-owned, queer-owned, woman-owned business. And so we really bonded over that, of just like shared experiences through our identity. That's a relationship we've been cultivating for years at this point. And so when you build like meaningful, real relationships with people, then you can sort of kind of transgressed into that collaborative aspect of your relationship. And through that relationship, you can 
kind of get cooking with creative ideas. And uh, Cafecito is kind of like an awkwardly shaped cafe. It's literally just like coffee bar and a long strip. It's a little bit of a tech nightmare yeah. if you're trying to cram a band. Anybody remember the old Rum Runners that used to be <laughs> yeah. next to the historic hotel? And it was just like that little tiny stage. It's like smaller than that. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you have to get creative with your solutions because don't let the space and the literal configuration of the space confine you. So for Drag Loteria, we decided to make it a big runway for the drag performers. It works great. Um, for Lights Down Low, um, that small concert series, I mean, that space fits like 50 people in there. That's it. And But it sells out every time. We've never not had a sold out show in the two years we've been in operation. And yeah. thank you. <laughs> Um, Just like Mr. White Keys, there we go. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> but we know our niche, which is um, those smaller venues, those more intimate shows, intimate productions, because the small shows do facilitate the bigger shows. They kind of bring people in for like a moment of intimacy with the artists rather than just being like a face in the crowd. You actually get to sit down and like get to know the artists that you're... you're um, you know, you paid to come and see, and it, you, it feels more personal. And so when you do end up seeing that artist on a larger stage, like, you kind of feel like you know them. And so that works. Um, so don't discount the small gigs at coffee shops. And I know there's a jazz jam that happens at Fire Island as well. Hugely successful. There is some incredible music that's being made there, and they are activating space. Um, and all ages space, one? too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say um, to kind of add to that, and also to um, touch on what Mr. White Keys was talking about, is just like the fact of when you have those small and medium venues, um, it is about the community connection, right? As performers, we understand that we give to them and then they give to us and it's this beautiful symbiotic relationship. And there's a way to invite them in while still being elevated and polished and and, and bringing the ooh la la that we we're kind of talking about, right? The, the experience. So that's also something that's really important to, to capitalize on. And that also, when you have those venues, um, you never know when they will hit it big and you will never see them in that venue again. You will never see them that close. You will never see them for that for free or that cheap. So those have a place for us, right? Beyond like the stadiums or even the larger halls that are 100 plus. The, the 10 to 50 range is still a sweet spot for that intimacy. Uh, I have one more question. Yeah, and that is when, I really loved when we talked, you brought up that you expect professionalism from the folks you work with, even if they're not necessarily used to like signing a contract and going through the whole process, that you treat everyone like they're seasoned professional and you, in some ways that's an opportunity for you to kind of level them up into like, we're doing this with a contract, we're doing this with all the details nailed down and so on. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the time we'll work with, um, especially just like in the prioritization of marginalized artists, and a, a large part of that is because we were um, trying to fill the gap and we were frustrated that there just didn't seem to be like as many opportunities for um, artists of color, queer artists. There weren't as many, like, it didn't feel like there was a, like a niche for people like us, and so... Um, knowing that, that there aren't as many opportunities. And then there are a lot of new artists who just don't have experience and they can't get into some of the larger venues. So like working with us, like we try to create a experience where like they know what to expect. And like everybody has to get their start somewhere. <laughs> And you don't want to count people out just because they don't have experience. And so it's kind of like incumbent on the producers to, to set that tone and set that standard so that it also sets up the artist for success too so that they know like what the standard is when they move into other relationships and other gig opportunities. Yeah, and I think um, uh, I personally in life and in work, I value so much in clear communication. Yeah. Communication, communication, communication. And I think, again, I feel safe because I'm a musician. That's not always a strong suit with every musician. Um, and sometimes you have that breakdown. But you, it, it is a collaboration, right? No one is the enemy. The venue isn't the enemy. The musician isn't the enemy. So being as, as forthright... Um, and as, as detailed as possible. I think anyone who's worked with us, they might think like, oh, Kendra and Mercedes, like details, 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 but it saves you from having all the hiccups later on or, oh my gosh, we are five minutes before doors are opening and we do not have this equipment or whatever that is. So we really try to make sure we're being really clear. You have any questions, keep the door open, you know, really keeping those lines open as well, um, everything in writing. 
everything in writing. Even if you're not having an, like, an official contract, have something so that you all both can reference it. Have a paper trail. Like I think at a bare minimum, even if you don't have your ducks in a row and you're still trying to get things started out, at least keep track of your emails and your text conversations and everything because that at least gives you some something to reference on at a minimum. Um, I want to have you for another hour, but um, <laughs> let me um, just ask you if there's any final thing that you want to share and give space for that. Sure. Um, we talked a lot about space activation, and we could literally have a whole, our own summit on space activation. Um, because I know everyone wrings their hands about the lack of venues in town, I really, really implore people to, like, I know people are already doing it, but, like, explore those relationships, explore creative ideas, transform existing spaces around town. Like, we have produced a whole like underground drag show in a literal dance studio where dancers rehearse and we in turn it- In the middle it, of industrial area of Yeah, and, like an off Arctic in a very awkward industrial space, but like it sells out every time. It's a very cool experience. It's happening this weekend. Um, <laughs> we're literally going there after this, but it's transforming spaces. Think outside the box, think, cre think creatively. There are venues all over town. We just haven't activated them yet, so. Make, create your own opportunities. We definitely like are a testament to like, don't wait for your ship to come in. Just build your own boat and sail. Yeah. Like, just do it. it like, yeah, just to finish that off of, uh, if you have those crazy ideas, go with it. Find the people who want to support it and make it real. It's only crazy because nobody has, has, has done it yet, right? So if Alaska is a trailblazing state. This is what we're known for. So um, don't be afraid to do the same in your own area, and you will attract those people, and you will collaborate, and you will create beautiful things. Do it for the culture. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. Arseniega Street Productions, Kendra and Mercedes. <laughs> Doing great. Thank you.